church. Good morning. Good morning.
He never used any of his godly attributes, which he had and could have, but would have disqualified him to be your <clears throat> Savior and mine. Amen. Because then he would have used an advantage that we don't have. But when you stop and think about the flip side of that coin, there is a temptation that you could even possibly imagine. I mean, greater temptation than you've ever been tempted with. Stop and think for a moment. That you have all power. All power. And this guy cuts you off on the highway. One thought. And he's smoke. You know what I'm saying? I don't think anybody here would pass that test. Because I've driven with some. <laughs> and I've seen people on the road. And it's it's crazy out there today. It really is. I mean, God bless each and every one of you. Everybody that travels, you know. I mean, people are just not paying attention today. And I really don't care what you do in your car. What you do in your car, brothers and sisters, is your business. It ain't none of my business. But please, keep it in your lane. I mean, when you're texting and driving through the media and back up the other side in a construction zone, maybe you ought to set that phone down. You know, I was up, I can't remember even where I was the other day. It was, Virgin, was it Virginia? Somebody ran right into a highway worker. Picked up and killed the guy. Highway shut down and everything. And thankfully, some of us old relics like myself still listen to Channel 19, so I was able to get off the highway and avoid all that stuff. Because guys were sitting there for hours and hours. Because when there's a fatality, nothing moves until the corner comes and pronounces the body dead. So that's why when you have a fatality on the highway, you wonder, why in the world? The, the highway's been shut for 12 hours. Well, the corner is eating his Thanksgiving turkey, and he ain't getting up. Until he's ready. That's the way this world works, brothers and sisters. Anyways, let us turn to Luke. Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Chapter 6. I want to give you a little something. This is Luke talking about the same thing that Matthew was talking about. Okay? In chapter 5. The Sermon on the Mount. And in, in Matthew chapter, or Luke chapter 6, well, I am not going to do all that because we don't have all this time, so I'm just going to get to it. 36, be ye therefore merciful, right? Doesn't that say merciful? <laughs> As your Father also is merciful. How can you interchange that word? Yeah, no, Jesus, you can't. Whew. That's an interesting, interesting understanding there, isn't it? Luke is up in the ante here. Um, just something to think about. Let's turn to Exodus. I am trying to cut this short so you guys can do that forever. Exodus, Exodus chapter 33. Exodus 33. When you all get there, just say it again. All right. And Moses, I'm starting in verse 12. This is Exodus 33 and verse 12. And Moses said unto the Lord, See thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee. This is deep stuff here. He wants to really know God. That I may find grace in thy sight and consider that this nation is thy people. And he said, my presence shall go with thee and I will give thee rest. Praise God. And he said unto them, if thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? 
Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken. For thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou cannot see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a what? Rock. Isn't that a convenient word? <laughs> they put it right there. Ah, just food for thought. If I have to explain that to you, you're going to miss a lot. You should get that. And it shall come to pass, while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in the cliff of the rock, and I will cover thee with my hand while I pass by, and I will make my hand, and, not, and I will take away my hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. And let's go right, skip down from 34 right into verse 6. Chapter 34 and verse 6. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious and long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. And that, are we capturing this? This perfection. This mercifulness of God. Did Peter walk on the water? Yes, yes, yes. How did he do it? Is it possible for man to walk on the water? No. Can't be Did Jesus say, Come? Yes, yes. Did Jesus say, be ye perfect? Yes. Ooh. Did Moses part the Red Sea? Yes. yes. God. No. No. <laughs> How did he do it? God told him to do it, right? Is God asking us to be perfect? Did Lazarus, did he walk out of the grave? Yes. How's that possible that dead people, we know as Adventists, that isn't going to happen until later. How did that happen? By our God. Jesus. I like the fact that you said he called him by name. What, what would have happened if Jesus said, just come forth? <laughs> Absolutely. I like that. Thank you. And. It's because Jesus called him that he could come out of the dead, right? Is Jesus asking us to be perfect? As your Father in heaven is perfect. So how do we be perfect? Brothers and sisters. Absolutely with his love. If we are merciful, if like we talked about in Sabbath school class, we are looking onto Jesus. We can't help become merciful. Amen. We can't sin because you can't look Jesus square in the eye and sin. You can't do it, brothers and sisters. You have to turn your back to sin. And that's a dangerous place to be. Let's turn our Bibles to Matthew 19. Matthew 19 and 26. 
Somebody gets there, go ahead and read it out loud, nice and loud. But Jesus looked at them and said to them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things. I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, that there is divine power in the commandments of God. Amen. If God is asking you to do something, He will give you what you need to do. Amen. Okay? There's no need to be self-righteous. There's no need that I can do it. I am the man. Because you ain't the man. Okay? And when we're merciful, we realize that, don't we? Hmm. What, did, what did Paul say? I'm the chief of sinners, right? How, why, why did he say that? How could he say that? Because he knew what his best was. <laughs> but he also knew the perfection of Christ. Ah, there's the real isn't that the ultimate protection in pride, of pride? Because that's where we all fall, brothers and sisters. Because if you, if you do anything wrong in the commandments, it's because of pride. Because if I'm stealing, I'm not believing God is going to take care of me. Right? If I'm coveting another man's wife, right, I'm doing it because I'm not believing that God is going to put in my wife what I need. Right? I'm a thief, and I'm a liar, and I'm everything that I am because I'm proud, right? This is the problem. But if I'm merciful, and I see all others as better than myself, how can I be prideful? How can I be anything but perfect? I'm going to be on the right track. God has got this... It's like I like to say when you pray first thing in the morning, the first thing you need to do is just imagine a piece of paper or physically take out a piece of paper if this is what you got to do, and you sign your name to the bottom of it. And you say, well, the day is yours. I've given it to you. You fill it all in. And I'm just going to love people, and I'm going to be faithful to you, and I'm going to be merciful to the guy that cuts me off. Regardless, I'm going to be merciful to the guy who throws his beer cans over my fence, right? As an Ed Menace, you've got to wonder, hey, what do I do with this can? If I put it in a recycle bin, my so neighbors might see it. Yeah. So do I throw it back over? <laughs> you know, sin causes these dilemmas, these, these tough questions. First Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15 and 42. We're going to read a little bit here. When you get there, just say amen. Yeah. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. What is this sounding like? Is this ringing in your ear at all? There's some picture forming in your mind. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. Hmm. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The second... The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural. And afterward, that which is spiritual, the first man is of the earth, earthly. The second man is the Lord from heaven. And is, as is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we also bear the image of the heavenly. Praise Amen. Jesus. Woo. This is heavy, heavy stuff here, brothers and sisters. I'm just going to keep reading and we'll go a little bit here. 
Um, now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Hmm. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trump shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. What happens in that tent? Life and death. Life and death. So this life that I now lead is not my own. I've been bought with a price. So I have a new master. Because I had an old master even though I thought it was me. It really wasn't. Perfection is not holy flesh, brothers and sisters. That's not what we're preaching from this pulpit. Amen. Not at all. As long as we live in these bodies, we will have a sinful nature. This sinful nature has to be overcome. Amen. It can't be fixed. It can't be corrected. It must be crucified. Amen. That's what Jesus said. That's the only way that we can have victory. That's the only way that we can go on and carry on and do the things that Jesus has asked us to do. Amen. And that's the only way he's going to come back. Amen. We are talking, brothers and sisters, about glorification. Glorification. Not perfectionism or holy flesh. Are we understanding that? We're all together on the same page? Let's turn to Jude. Everybody knows who that book is? It's a little teeny book. It's just before Revelation. And when somebody gets there, I want you to read verse 24 real loud. Anybody? sisters with sinful flesh our carnal nature we can have a spiritual mind Amen. a spiritual mind that's where the real battle is okay victory victory brothers and sisters in your life today is no promise of, of victory tomorrow unless you have the right dependence and that dependence is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In Him, by Him, for Him, through Him, you can conquer in. 1 John 2 and 1. 1 John is a little bit left. 1 John 2. What does it say there? Anybody? My little children, these things I write to you, so that so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Hmm. See, Adam and Eve, brothers and sisters, were created perfect. Okay, created perfect, but they were immature. Alright? People don't understand how you can birth a, maybe a 30-year-old man, but that's what God did. <laughs> and woman. 
they were full grown, right? And the Bible says they were perfect, right? But they were immature. Weren't they? Hmm. I am using the word perfection in the finite sense, okay? Not as God <coughs> is infinitely perfect. God is infinite, we're finite. Okay, do we understand that? God doesn't have sinful flesh. I had some words that I, I had to look up, and I did have my Bible because I left it here the last time I preached, and it was stuck on a table back there, and I couldn't find it till this morning. So I had to take my Strong's and the copier this morning at like 3 o'clock and cover it up and push the button and do everything. So here's some words for you. 5056, telos, the word perfect, full grown. Yes. The word 5342, I'm not, P-H-E-R-O. Okay? A primary verb and apparently not con cognitive ones are used in certain tenses only, namely, to bear or carry in a very widely application, literally and figuratively, as follows, be bear, bring forth, carry, come, let her drive, be driven, endure, go on, lay, lead, move, reach, rushing, uphold. These are magnificent words. Foros. And this word is G5411. A load, a tax. Properly, an, properly, an individual assessment on persons or property. Whereas is usually a, gene a, a generic toll on goods or travel is a tribute. Are, are you capturing some of these words? Are you, are you getting what they mean? Now this foros is also forotizo, which is G5412, to load up properly as a vessel or animal to overburden with ceremony laid by heavy by heavy laden. Hmm. And then there's 5413, and I don't even know how to pronounce this one, but it's P-H-O, proportion, diminutive of 5414, an invoice as part of freight, figuratively a task, service, or a burden. I want to get you this, now on the, on the that's the Greek. I want to give you the Hebrew side. Shalom. You've heard that word before, right? This is 7965, shalom. Figuratively, well, happy, friendly, also abstractly welfare, health, prosperity, peace, do, familiar, fair, favor, friend, great health, good health, peace, perfect. Such as be at peace, peaceable, peaceably, prosper, prosperity, prosperous, rest, safe, safety, salute, welfare, well, all is well, be well, hold. This when you when you're when you're just reading the Bible and you don't take time to to, to figure these words out and go back and see why did they use that word and what does it really mean? You don't get the bigger picture. Now 799 is salam, a primitive word to be safe in mind, body, or estate, figuratively to be causatively made completed, or by implication to be friendly by extension to reciprocate, Make amends, end, make an end, finish, full, give again, make good, pay, repay, pay.
pay again, make peace, make to be at peace, be at peace, peaceable, that is perfect, perform, prosper, make prosperous, make prosperous, recompense, render, requite, make restitution, restore, reward, surely. These are amazing words. Amazing words. They have deep meaning. Very deep meaning. Let's turn our Bible.